Hello everyone, my name is Sam Huang. Um, so in structural estimation, it is common practice to assume that uh, the players and the, the data is coming from players playing uh, Nash equilibrium. Um, a well-known example of that uh, is estimation of first price auction models. But in some applications, uh, the equilibrium assumption, the, pl uh, the assumption that players are playing equilibrium uh, strategy might not be appropriate. Um, one of the examples that Professor Taksu emphasized is multi-unit auction. <clears throat> Another application that is also the topic of this talk is non-strategy proof school choice mechanism. Um, so this pa paper proposes a method to estimate the parameters uh, and run counterfactual robust to uh, different behavioral assumptions in school choice context. So what motivated this, this project is a real life um, school choice mechanism which is happening in Seoul, Korea. So 80,000 students uh, in Seoul is, is being assigned to uh, high schools uh, through a centralized matching mechanism each year since 2010. Um, and this matching mechanism is a variation of Boston mechanism. And what's uh, particular about this mechanism is that it is only partially specified. The aspect of the, this mechanism that is partially spe specified is the assignment algorithm for the unmatched students, and the tie-breaking scheme, and the exact capacities for each school. So um, even with this uh, limitation, economists still would like to know what, what would be the social welfare outcome if we uh, implemented a different, uh, uh, different matching mechanism with uh, better theoretical properties. Uh, in order to do that, we need to estimate the parameters that determine the students' preferences over schools. Um, so usually we would, one would impose like a big, uh, an equilibrium assumption, but some might doubt that that assumption is valid in this case. Uh, there are three reasons at least. So in the previous papers, it was documented that students are playing kind of suboptimal strategy. Um, and also, borrowing from the, the com computer science literature, it is known that computation of equilibrium is a very hard problem. And also, the game that students are supposed to play is not even fully specified, so the equilibrium assumption might not be uh, appropriate. So what this paper does is that I'm allowing, allowing two scenarios where uh, one, one of which is all students play perfect equilibrium strategy. And in the other scenario, all students are naive in a particular sense that, that I'll talk about. Um, and I'm going to derive empirical restrictions, which is called moment inequalities in this literature, uh, that are consistent with, uh, with these two states of the world. Um, this weak, weak restrictions will lead to partial identification and uh, set estimation. Um, and with that set estimate, I'm going to run counterfactual uh, experiment and uh, reach some, uh, draw some conclusion. So the preview of findings is that I found a, an alternative mechanism that provides higher social, higher ex post social welfare than the current mechanism for all elements in the set estimate, for all simulations. Uh, and then that mechanism is deferred acceptance with, with neighborhood priority. So the roadmap of the talk is I'm going to talk about the data and model briefly, and then some, I'm going to give you some institutional background and how the mechanism works. And then I'm going to talk about this empirical restrictions that I'm imposing, and then I'm going to uh, show you the results. So I'm using the data from year 2012, two years uh, into the, this implementation of this mechanism. And the data that I have is the complete set of rank order lists submitted by students. And uh, I have some student demographics data, um, their gender and their, where, where they live in the, in zip, uh, with the zip code. And I have a, a student characteristics data. I have type of schools, measure of academic quality, measure of safety, and the distance from schools to, schools to students. Um, to be more specific, the type of schools that I'm talking about is 
the, like whether a school is public, private, charter, science magnet, or co-ed, boys only, girls only, that type of types. Um, and the measures of quality, uh, academic quality, are, are threefold. Uh, one of them is number of applicants per seat averaged over 2010 and 2011. Um, and the percentage of students scoring above average in a standardized test, and the government statistics for the value added uh, by each school. Um, and the measure of safety at each school is the number of students viol student violence, violence cases. And the, the distance data is the length of commute in minutes from each zip code to each school. Um, so, what well, the model that I want to estimate is this random standard random coefficient model. Basically, this UIS is the utility that student I gets from from school being from being assigned to school S. Um, so I'm not going to estimate this B B uh, the betas for for all students for each student. I'm just going to estimate the distribution of these these uh, coefficients. Um, and the unit, and the, this the UIS is function of all the variables that I have, linear function of all the variables that I have, and the unit of the, this utility is in, in minutes of commuting, because I, I don't have the, the, the price data that is the uh, best I can do, um, other than like the utils that is hard, harder to interpret. So the parameters that I want to estimate is the mean of this, of this um, distribution of co coefficients and the covariance matrix and the unobservable terms. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, the mean of that is assumed to be zero, and I'm, I'm, allow, I'm, I'm, I'm going to estimate the, the variance of that, uh, that matrix, the covariance matrix. A little bit of institu institutional background. The many of schools that, stu uh, that students face are that uh, look like this. So they, uh, they can choose from 19 charter schools, 19 science magnet schools, and 178 uh, general schools. And they exercise choice uh, by submitting a rank order list. So this is the rank order list that students submit. Um, so there are 209 schools to get all together, but the length of the rank order list is only six, it's, so it's very constrained in that sense. Another, and another sense that it is constrained is, if you look at the rank order list, the, the first choice can only be one of the charter schools. You don't have to rank a charter school, but if you, if you were to rank, uh, first rank a school, you, it has to be charter school. And the second school has to be one of the science magnet schools. And the third and fourth rank schools should be, can be any schools in, in, the, in the city other than the charter and the science. And the, and the fifth and sixth ranked schools can only be within your choice zone, which is going to be defined later. So these are the choice zones that, if you look at the fifth and sixth choices, you can only rank one of uh, the schools in your choice zone uh, for your fifth and sixth choice. And these are the choice zones. Each like, block of land colored differently or is one, school, uh, one choice zone. Each school, uh, each choice zone has about 20 schools uh, each. And so for those of you who are not familiar with the, what the Boston mechanism is, I'm going to briefly explain what it is. So in round zero, schools, preference, schools priorities or preferences are determined, and the rank order lists uh, are submitted by students. And the random lottery that is used to break the ties between the students are drawn. And in round one, the mechanisms assign students to their first uh, choice schools. When there are ties between students, uh, let the, uh, it lets the priority, priorities and the random lotteries break the ties between the students. And, uh, and the assigned students are taken out of the algorithm, which means the assignment is final when, it, when they are assigned. And the same thing happens in, in the subsequent round. And because of the length of the uh, rank order list is only six, the Sole, cho sole school choice mechanism ends in round, round six, and uh, those who are not matched at, at, after the round si at, the, at the end of the round six will, will be unmatched students. All right, so these are the priorities of each school. So for charter schools and science schools, they, prioritizes, they prioritize uh, 
kind of neighborhood students, neighborhood kids. And the, for, and the 50 percent of the capacities of charter schools and science schools are prioritizing the neighborhood kids. And the other half are open, are open enrollment. And it's, the lottery is the only criterion. Um, and the precedence runs from top to bottom. Um, and for general schools, it's more complicated. So the, the first 20 percent of the capacity is lottery on, only. And the first 20 percent is allocated to the round three and four. And the next 40 percent, which is reserved for the choice zone students, are used in the round five and six. And the, the remaining 40 percent of the capacities of the general schools are reserved for the unmatched uh, students. And so the yellow colored part of these capacities are inputted into the algorithm with the anchor list and then the Boston mechanism, that Boston mechanism is misrun and uh, the mechanism shoots out the assignment. So these 40 percent, that is, that is 40 percent of the capacities at the general schools are reserved for unmatched students. So why is this, how is this uh, mechanism partially specified? So as you, as you saw, 40 percent of the general school's capacities are, are reserved for unmatched students, but so that means at, uh, around 40 percent of the students will be, will be unmatched at the end of the round six, but it is not uh, clearly specified how these 40 percent students are going to be uh, assigned to these, these 40 percent uh, capacities reserved for unmatched students. It all the kind of the book, the rule book set only says that they're going to assign, this is kind of a direct quote from that book. So we are going to consider your choices, religion, and commute in assign you, assigning you to a school in your choice zone and adjacent, adjacent ones. So a, a choice zone and an a, a adjacent ones, adjacent choice, one, choice zones have at most about 150 schools. So this is basically saying, well, if, you, if you're un unmatched, you can basically be, a, be assigned, to, assigned to one of 150 schools, which is kind of very risky uh, for, for students. So if you look at the data, 15 percent of the students are assigned to schools that they did not rank. Um, so it's not a insignificant risk that students face. Um, another aspect of the algorithm that is not clearly specified is the tie-breaking scheme. We don't know if it's multiple tie-breaking, single tie-breaking, or anything else. Um, and the number of available seats at each school is not known exactly. So it is obviously clear that this mechanism is non-strategy proof. Uh, so we all know that Boston mechanism, mechanism is non-strategy proof from previous works. And the length of list is very but much smaller than the number of schools, and we know from previous literature that if you if you have that kind of constraint, truncation and dropping are inevitable. Um, and also because of the constraint on the the type of schools that you can rank at a specific rank. So if you're if you rank if you w prefer a charter school, uh, but if you if you're if the best school for, your, for you is science school and the second best is, is charter school, then there is no way that you can truthfully express that preference uh, given the constraint on the, on the rank order list. Okay, so, so I already said this, but the motivation for allowing kind of non-equilibrium behavior are, are these. So some students are, are already observed to, to play suboptimal uh, strategy in Boston mechanism. Um, and computing equilibrium of a game is as hard, is at least as hard as a long-standing um, math problem yet to be solved. Um, and again, the game is only partially specified. So there can be many and infinitely many instances of the game that that game. Of course, like simple games can be can be um, solved easily, but if you like scale the game and the number of action space is large then there's no like a very good algorithm to solve the problem. So again, my approach is I'm allowing two scenarios, uh, one of which is all students play equilibrium, uh, limit equilibrium, or the equilibrium of a continuum model. 
And in other world, uh, all students are naive in a particular sense. And I'm going to identify beliefs that are, that are true in both worlds. And I'm going to derive empirical restrictions or the moment of inequalities using the beliefs. Uh, and I'm going to use the, the technique, the set, identif uh, set estimation technique uh, introduced by Romano, Scheich, and Ulf uh, to, to recover the set that covers the true value of the parameters uh, with 95% probability. Okay, so what is this empirical restriction that I'm talking about? So suppose that a student submitted a rank or list on, the, on, your, on your left. Um, he first ranked a school S, so that means he did not rank, he did not submit a, an alternative rank or list that looks exactly like his submitted rank or list except for a different first choice school. So suppose that this, this student believe that this school S is harder to get into than school S prime. Then if you believe that, the implication is that if you believed S was more popular and still ranked S instead of S prime, that means you had to have liked S better than S prime. That is the, uh, that, that is the kind of the idea of the empirical restrictions that, uh, that I'll drive. So to be more precise, uh, let me introduce some notations. So, so the pi S is I's, student I's subjective probability of being assigned to school S if she first ranks uh, school S. And if pi I S is less than pi I S prime, then I'm going to call, I'm going to uh, note that as S is more popular than S prime for student I. Um, and let V I S denote I, I's, student I's expected, prob uh, expected utility conditional on rejection by school S. Then the expected utility from first ranking school S looks like this. So pi I S times U I S plus the residual probability times the expected utility conditional on rejection. So with that notation, so the expected utility from the submitted rank or list on your left looks like that. And by reveal preference, that should be greater than or equal to um, the one on the right. Very simple uh, algebra tells you that if pi i s is less than pi i s prime, and u i s is greater than or equal to v s, and v s is equal to v s prime, then, um, then this first inequality implies the second inequality, which is uh, u i s is greater than or equal to u i s prime. So the UIS is greater than VS. Uh, that means that at each round, you would rather be assigned in the current round than, than get rejection. That's the interpretation. That's, uh, that's what it is in English. And VS is equal to VS prime. That means the expected utility conditional on rejection from S and S prime are the same. So, so this is obviously not true in the general sense. Uh, so it is not true for, for all tie-breaking scheme. For example, if you are under a single tie-breaking scheme, then getting rejection from a pop, uh, less popular school means that you have a worse uh, lottery. That is a very bad signal for your lottery number. So the VS prime will, will be different from VS. So, but it can be true for some cases where, uh, for example, if, VS, if the lottery that you get conditional on rejection from S uh, is just degenerate in the sense that you, 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 can, you will get like a school for sure because that school is undersubscribed, then it, it will be the same regardless of which school you're, you're getting rejected from. Um, so, and it is data dependent. Um, so for, for this talk, I'm, the estimates com are coming from the assumption that the ties are broken roundwise, so to break this de dependence between the, the each round. So it, the implication from reveal preference is, if you if you believe S, school S is more popular than school S prime, then and you still first rank school S, then you had to have liked S better than S prime. All right. So from that implication, uh, the empirical restriction or the moment inequality is the following, so the probability 
that you think a school is more, po is more popular than another school and you still rank school, that, school, that popular school should be less than the probability that you prefer that school. Um, so what is the pi is the belief in equilibrium? So in this scenario where everyone is playing equilibrium strategy, limit equilibrium strategy, then pi is is just equal to the ex post uh, probability that you observe in the data. Um, so that means if s is ex post more popular than s prime, then ex ante students, all students, so all students must have believed that that is true. So let me turn to uh, the, the naive belief. So the, this is the particular naive belief that I'm assuming in this, in this project. So in the scenario where everyone is naive, if a school S had more applicants per C than S prime in all previous years, then naive students believe S is more popular than S prime this year. Um, so this is kind of a stylized naive behavior, but there are some motivations. So this is very similar to uh, learning behavior. And from previous literature and ex in the experiment literature, we know, uh, we know that learning expl explains how, how players uh, play game well. And also in reality, there is supply and demand for the information the past popularity. Um, but I, let me uh, point out that this framework, this method, can also accommodate other non-strategic behavior. For example, truth, truthful reporting. Um, that was assumed in this, in this paper that used the Boston mechanism data. All right, so, so that means combining these two worlds, if a school was more popular than another school ex post, and also, also that school, the school S, was more popular than that school, than the other school in all previous years. That means students must have believed that S is more popular than S prime in both, for both scenarios. And in deriving the moment inequalities or the empirical restrictions, I'm going to use only such a uh, pair of schools S and S prime. And if you uh, look at the data, the, ex, uh, the, the, the belief from the equilibrium and the belief from the naive behavior agree only 60% of the time. So of course, this will reduce the number of moment inequalities that I can drive. Uh, but it will be more, but the estimate that I get is will be more, rebu more robust to, to these two different uh, behavioral assumptions. So here are the, here are the re estimation results. I've tried 1.2 million uh, randomly drawn points from the primary space. And I, I got 2,512 uh, 2, points in the set estimate of these parameters. And because of the weak restrictions that I'm imposing, um, much weaker than the equilibrium strategy, equilibrium assumption, uh, the results, the estimate results are informative results uh, the, the estimation results in uninformative set, uh, set estimate of individual parameters. I can show you the estimate. Because I cannot search over the entire real line uh, uh, Euclidean space, I had to kind of pick a, I had to pick a box in that Euclidean space. Uh, and so the, mi the minimum of that box is 100 and, um, 445, and the max is 445. And as you can see, most um, most uh, individual coefficients resulted in the entire uh, box, except for these uh, few ones. So the interpretation of these numbers is that if you, so let's say that the value added is negative 55, the coefficient on the value added is negative 55, then, if you, then the interpretation is if a school um, increases the value added by one standard deviation that is equivalent to um, that negative five, 55 minutes, which is, um, so I guess negative 55 is, so suppose that value, the coefficient on the value added is 55, that means if you, if a school increases the value added by one standard deviation, that means 
students are willing to travel 55 more minutes to get to that school. So that, that is interpretation. But as you can see, this, the, estimate, the individual estimate of the coefficients is not very informative. Even the sign, you cannot even sign it. So this is the kind of the evidence that the data from non-strategy proof mechanisms is not very useful in parsing out the students' preferences in a specific characteristics of schools. I fear you're not willing to assume like a strong behavioral assumption. All right, so what are the alternative mechanism that, mechanisms that I tried? The first one is the deferred acceptance with choice zone priority. And we, know, we all know that it is strategy proof and results in student optimal stable matching. And the other alternative mechanism is the random serial dictatorship. Um, it is strategy proof and ex post prior efficient. So I, an ideal counterfactual policy experiment that I, that I would like to run is for, for each estimate of the parameter, I can draw the vector of cardinal utilities for, for each school, for each student, from the distribution that is specified that estimate, and find the rancor list that would, that would be submitted uh, given that drawn vector of utilities under the current mechanism and the alternative mechanism, and run the mechanisms and compute the kind of this ex post social welfare, which is the sum of the unwe uh, unweighted sum of the ex post utilities of over students, and repeat w step one through three many, many times for each, for each estimate. But the problem is this red uh, colored text. Because the weak, weak uh, behavior assumption that I'm imposing, uh, you, cannot map, you cannot have a one-to-one -one, uh, function from, from a draw of the utility, cardinal utilities to a single, single uh, rank order list. So it's, it's going to be a correspondence. And usually, it's going to result in many, many uh, rank order lists. So this is not very feasible. What, what I can do is, for each uh, estimate of the parameters, um, I, I'm going to draw the cardinal utilities, but only the ones that, that rationalizes the rank or list observed in the data um, in relation to the weak, weak behavioral assumptions. And then, for the, alter for the, al for the alternative mechanism, it, which is strategy proof, I can usually uh, easily pick the rank or list that students would have submitted under the alternative mechanism. And for the current mechanism, I'm just going to fix the behavior as the ones that I'm uh, observed in the data. Um, so the interpretation of this exercise is that I'm going to compare the ex post welfare comparison in the, day, in the year 2012, which is where the data comes from. So which this is. Uh, weaker, weaker statement that I can make about uh, the mechanisms. So, and here are the results. So there were 2,500 2, points in the set estimate. And for each estimate, deferred acceptance with choice zone pr priority provides higher social welfare in, in, in all of the estimates for all, simulation, so for all simulations that I ran. Um, to be more specific, the maximum amount by which students prefer the alternative on average is 149 minutes. So that means if uh, students, if the mechanism is switched to the, uh, this better mechanism, uh, that is equivalent, then they will, they will feel equivalent only if they travel 149 minutes farther under the, this alternative mechanism. Um, and the minimum amount by which students prefer the alternative on average is 6.5 minutes. Um, and the minimum percentage of students who prefer the alternative, and the, this minimum maximum are taken over for all estimates and all simulations. And the minimum percentage of students who prefer the alternative is 44%. And the maximum percentage of students who, who prefer the current mechanism is 40%. Uh, but we cannot say that uh, we can not say that the alternative mechanism is better with that confidence under the uh, random serial dictatorship, because there are two points uh, in the set estimate that where the current mechanism was actually better than the random serial dictatorship. I'm not, make kind of a, in, I'm not making any inference about like, what that two point means. But what I can say is basically choice, the first alternative mechanism, which is choice uh, deferred acceptance with choice on 
priority is better than this RSD. And it, I think, also fits the, pol uh, the policy, like what the government official cares about, which is one of which is having students in their, in their neighborhood. So the future work is I want to make a general statement rather than this ex post uh, statement about the welfare property of the, of the current mechanisms. Um, and also, uh, like Professor uh, Kojima said in the beginning, I want to see like what, how, how far I can stretch this method to, to the mixed population where some of them are naive and some of them are sophisticated. So the main problem with the kind of computing the welfare for the Boston mechanism is computation, like how to compute the equilibrium. And I've recently found the, like, way, one way to do it, but I haven't actually implemented the code yet. And it's, I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to take a long time. So you can actually have good equilibrium So yeah, so there has been a paper where they show that the Highland and Zeckhauser's um, mechanism is actually kind of equivalent in the in the yeah. in the result sense. Like if they play that that thing perfectly, that the results would be e uh, equivalent to the Boston mechanism. So I can I can do that. I can implement the Highland and Zeckhauser to actually calculate the welfare for under under the Boston mechanism. Right. That, that's the charitable case for the Boston mechanism. Right. So this is a Bayesian equilibrium.
is there any question right thank you